I want to teach from this subject, the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you say with me, say the power of the Holy Ghost. And I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of John, the book of St. John, chapter 16. The book of St. John, chapter 16, verses 7 through 13. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm so glad that I'm in relationship with the Holy Spirit. I've learned that he's my guide, he's my teacher, he's my comforter, he leads me into all truth. He supplies the grace that I need for every test, for every situation that's in my life. So glad to know him. What about you? However, one of the things that being a pastor that I know and I understand is that many people fear the Holy Spirit. They fear the anointing because the Holy Spirit manifests himself in many ways. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit shows up, he makes you want to shout. I've seen people when the Holy Spirit shows up, he makes you want to run. And sometimes you might see somebody just take out running in the house of God. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost shows up, sometimes you might hear somebody speak in other tongues tongues or I mean people might shout and jump up and down because the Holy Spirit manifests himself in many ways when he shows up and so often I'm asked the question pastor how do you do it as a matter of fact I was just asked this question just the other day somebody said pastor I just don't see how you do it they said to me week after week how do you stand up there before the congregation and where do you get the inspiration week after week to deliver a word of God? As a matter of fact, you know how my children are. Sometimes y'all say, well, I mean, I know I, I just couldn't do it. I'm sure that some of you have said it. There's no way I could do it, Pastor. Come up with something week after week and then have to deal with all those people. Oh, no, I tell them off and just leave. You know, I'm glad I'm not the pastor. And so certainly in and of myself, I guess I would say, you know, I couldn't do it either. I, I know that I really couldn't do it. So my answer is the same now as it always has been. And it's that I do what I do by the power of the Holy Ghost. Literally, the words that I speak on Sunday mornings are inspired by God. I, I, I generally, my schedule is, is during the week, I take time to go before the Holy Spirit, to sit in the presence of God. And because of the nature of my assignment, I expect to hear from God. I, I, I do. I, I expect to hear from God. You know, and I don't mean to sound uh, uh, super spiritual to anyone as though, you know, I sit and then, you know, there's this, you know, I'm just hearing the voice of God and God is just, I, I, I don't mean to sound super spiritual like that because certainly I'm inspired by you. Sometimes you may say something that might inspire me when I bring the word of God. Or maybe I'm inspired by a story or, or, or how many of you understand that the atmosphere may many times dictate what is going to be preached in the house. Sometimes what's going on in the lives of God's people dictate what is going uh, uh, to be going on. But, you know, I admit that certainly there are times that it's hard for me even as a pastor to hear from God. I mean, sometimes I have to wait on the Holy Spirit. But I always, always pray. So the reality is, is that the Holy Spirit enables us to carry out whatever assignment that God gives you in the earth realm. So whatever your holy, whatever your holy assignment is, whatever God has called you to do, the Holy Spirit is your enabler. See, God wouldn't tell you to do something, Lisa, and then not enable you to do it. That's why I never say, you know, I can't do this, or God, I just can't do it. Now, if I say it, it's just in jest, because I don't really mean it, because I know that anything God tells me to do, the Holy Spirit is right there to enable me to do it. And if I don't know how it's going to happen, he'll lead me to the truth. How many of you understand that? And so in the book of John, chapter 16, verses 7, did I say verse 7? 
through 13, Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. He said, it is expedient for you that I go away, because of course, it was time for Jesus to go away, and, and, and his disciples didn't want him to leave. But he said, it's needful or it's expedient that I go away. He said, for if I go not away, the comforter or the Holy Spirit will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. If I, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Then verse 13, he says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will do what? He will, he will do what? Guide you where? Into all truth. Go ahead. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will do what? Show you things to come. So Jesus said, look, I've got to go away. I can't stay here with you because if I stay, I'm limited by the fact that I'm in this earthly body. But if I go away, I'll send the Holy Spirit to you and he will lead you. He will guide you. He will comfort you. He will speak only what the Father says. So how am I able to bring a word of God Sunday after Sunday and not get my flesh all involved in it? It's because the Holy Spirit speaks. And he will speak what the Father says. So I can't take any credit. Nor would I want to take any credit for what I do. All that I am and all that I ever hope to be I realize it's by God's grace. I realize that all that I am is an instrument in the earth. All that you are as a Christian is God's instrument, his vessel in the earth realm to carry out God's will in the earth. Lift up your hands in the presence of the Lord and say all that I am is God's instrument, his vessel to carry out the will of God in the earth. Amen. And so I've yielded myself to the Holy Spirit and to his work and to his will. God chose me. I didn't choose myself. What I do, I want you to understand that I never sat around and daydreamed about being a preacher. When I was a little girl, that was not my dream. It wasn't anything that I asked God for. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know God. But the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. He will lead you into your assignment and your destiny. That's why you need him. That's why so many people are walking around aimlessly without direction saying, what do I do? I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh God, what? Why? When? Listen, you need the Holy Spirit. He will lead you. He will guide you into your destiny assignment. Amen. Well, pastor, who is the Holy Spirit? Not what is the Holy Spirit, but who is the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is a person. Lift your hands and say, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God in you. God in us. So today I want to turn your attention to the power of the Holy Spirit in you. And I want to try and answer some questions and I want to clear up some misconceptions that you may have about who the Holy Spirit really is. And I want to begin to talk about this morning the importance, listen to me now, 
of you being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So not just talk about the Holy Spirit, but I want to talk about the importance of you being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So you may say, well, Pastor A, I thought that when I was born again, that day when I came up here and stood at the altar, you told me, Pastor, that the Holy Spirit came to live inside of me. He did. When you were born again, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. When you gave your life to the Lord. Now, although the Holy Spirit comes to live in you when you are born again, the only way that I can explain the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to say that it is another measure of God, another measure of his power in your life. How many of you understand that? See, you, he came to live in you, but yet there is still another measure and another power. I want you to turn with me now to the book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. Now, some of you may have heard, like I did when you were growing up, that tongues was of the devil. Did any of you ever hear that, you know, there was something creepy about speaking in other tongues beside me? Am I the only one? Amen. Can I see your hand? Amen. So some of you may have heard, like me, that, you know, tongues is of the devil. Or that you, so, so maybe you grew up being afraid of speaking in other tongues. Or, or maybe you grew up thinking, well, you know what? Those people who speak in other tongues, they're crazy. I thought it all. I thought the tongues was of the devil. I thought that people that spoke in other tongues, they had to be crazy. And surely that will never happen to me because you will never catch me looking like those people. You know, acting, all those things that can come into your head. Because many of us grew up, I mean, we grew up with all kinds of notions about being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We all went by what somebody else said. How many of you went by what somebody else said, what somebody told you? But how many of you know that somebody else didn't know God, didn't know the power of God? So let me first answer the question, is tongues of God? I want to answer the question, is tongues of God? And I want to give you a scriptural answer. Let me turn there with you. The book of Acts, are you there? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then what? Acts, and we're going to look at chapter 1. And let's begin by looking at verse 4, 5, and then 8 and 9. In the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. They're talking about Jesus. So Jesus was assembled there with his disciples, and he commanded them. He says, I don't want you to depart from Jerusalem, but I want you to wait for what? The promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with what? Do I have a church? Ye shall be baptized with? When? Not many days since. Well, how many of you know how, how, how many days they had to wait? Pentecost means 50. So for those of you who have ever been prayed to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and you said, Lord, it's taking a long time. You didn't have to wait 50 days. Well, we prayed for you. <laughs> we prayed one night and let you go home. Amen? Amen? So the Bible goes on to say in verse 7, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons when the Father hath put in his own hands, but ye shall receive what? Power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Where? In Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So the power that we have, the power that I have to face you week after week, the power that I have to go through difficult situations, to face 
death, to face the death of our loved ones and know that you know what, it's all right. It's going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. The power that you have not to have a mental breakdown. When you could because of some of the stuff that you're going through. Some of the things that you will go through is the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I would have lost my mind if it wasn't for the power of the Holy Ghost and knowing that he was real on the inside of me. Somebody lift your hands and say, he's real. Say, I've tried him and I know he's real. Is there anybody who know that the Holy Spirit is real in this house? See, see, I, I, you got to help me out today because not everybody knows. And when you don't know, you don't really feel like you need him. I can remember intellectualizing and, and, and trying to, you know what, uh, can, I, can I say this? Minister Michael, you were one when you came into the house of God. I'm going to show you how God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. I remember when you came to the church, and for those of you who know Minister Michael, you know he's a businessman. He always has been. He and his wife, I knew his wife. I've known her longer than actually I've known Minister Michael, but through her and Pastor Tom discovered that he was my cousin. And Minister Michael was always, you know, a businessman. He was kind of a... Help me out, Donna. You know, one of those Sadiddy businessmen. How many of you, y'all know Sadiddy people? Anybody know anybody that's kind of Sadiddy? Am I telling the truth, Elder Renee? You married to him. You know, he's kind of a, a Sadiddy businessman. So when he came to the church, as much as I loved him, I thought, well, I know he ain't going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Because, you know, I'm just going to tell you. Because, you know, intellectually trying to analyze the ones who would get to know God like that. And I want you to know he's the biggest tongue-talking Holy Ghost, Bible token, one of the, 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 the biggest tongue talkers, lovers of God that I know. Because you can't intellectualize or try and figure him out. He just comes. And if you think that, you know, you're too cute or you're too smart, then, then you probably won't receive him. Amen. But I, I want you to. God wants you to. There is something that God wants to do with you that can only be done through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I know that's why I'm teaching the message today because somebody, come on, somebody say somebody, say, and it might be me, is going to get filled. Now, now let me say something because you said, well, I'm already filled with the Holy Ghost, Pastor. But I want you to understand that even after you get filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, do you know that that Holy Ghost will show up with even another measure greater than the one that you have when you first get filled? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Some kind of way, I just think mom must be up there stirring up some stuff up there <laughs> for, for his glory. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I feel the power of God in this house. Pastor Ray, do I have to speak in tongues to know that I have received the Holy Ghost? It just sounds weird to me, Pastor Ray. It just don't sound right. I'm above that. Now, maybe some folk need it. Maybe that's the evidence that they need. But I'm too intellectual for that. I'm too cool for that. It sounds like gibberish to me. All right, you're already in Acts, right? So let's look at Acts chapter 2. And let's look at verses 1 through 4. Let's look at Acts chapter 2. I, I, you know, let's just see. Because I want you to have the word of God, not just what I said. But I want you to see what the Bible says because, see, folk who were speaking against the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, sometimes they don't have the Word of God. See, the churches that I went to, and like I said, we weren't really churchgoers, but, but the, you know, what can I say? The, the, even the pastors didn't have a word. You ever been to a church that you never had to ask, you were asked to open up your Bible? You ever, I mean, I, I have. I went to a church where they never told me to open up my Bible and turn to see 
The pastor said it, you, you accepted it. And if you didn't, you might get voted out of the church. And so I remember when God called me, because like I said, this was not in my plan. This was not on my agenda. I didn't grow up and as a teenager aspire to be a pastor. As a matter of fact, I didn't even plan to go to church. But God had an assignment for my life. And in order for me to carry out my God-given assignment in truth, in power, in authority, under the anointing, by the word of God, he knew what I needed. So not only did he save me, but he raised me up. He baptized me with the Holy Ghost. And now I'm a tongue-talking woman preacher. Go figure. None of my family members would have voted me to be a pastor or a preacher. As a matter of fact, in case they watch it, I'm going to be careful. Y'all know. Y'all know none of us would have voted the other one to be a preacher. And certainly we used to make fun of the, of the tent. Because, you know, I don't know in your neighborhood that they used to have tent meetings. How many of you ever saw tent meetings in your city and you, you passed by just to hear the folk speaking in tongues? We used to peep through the door and say, ooh, Lord. Then, you know, the ushers would look out and we'd start running because we knew something was wrong with them. Amen. And so do I need the Holy, do I need to speak in other tongues to know that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost? Okay, we're looking at Acts chapter 2. Let's look at verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a... Okay, those that are paying attention, y'all might have to help me. And what happened? It filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, Uh-huh, and what happened? They began to do what? Tell your neighbors, say they were filled with the Holy Ghost and started speaking in tongues. Say, that's what the Bible says. And they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And check out verse 5, because I think it's very important. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So represented in the group were Jews and devout men, holy men and women. So these were people who were learned of understanding, and even they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So in fact, tongues is the proof that the Holy Ghost has come, that you have received another measure. When you hear somebody speaking in tongues, that's the proof. Tongues is not the Holy Spirit. Don't be deceived. It's not the Holy Spirit, but it's the proof that the Holy Spirit is come. Let me give you an example. See if I can make it clear. Sometimes I'll walk out my yard, and at first, you know, when I first saw these little black round balls, little hard balls, I was like, what is that? I didn't know what it was. Then one day I was looking out the window, and I saw a deer and he was going to the bathroom and I realized that those little black hard round balls belong to the deer all right and so I was like oh I know what that is it's the evidence that the deer have passed through the yard all right y'all feel me you following me so now when I go outside and I see those little black, hard, round balls, I say, oh, the deer been through. Another example. Y'all know I live in the country. Go outside, look around the house. Pastor and I were looking, we saw big holes all in the house. What, what are these holes in, our, in the stucco? 
Walked around, we saw some more holes in the stucco. Keep going around the corner, there's a woodpecker. Just pecking a hole, putting holes. In the yard. Now when we go out there and look, we see the holes. We know that the woodpecker has been there. The holes are not the woodpecker, but it's the evidence that the woodpecker has been there. So when we speak in other tongues, the tongues is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God in us, but the utterance, the tongues, is the evidence that the Holy Spirit has come. How many of you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? So when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other tongues, people are, oh, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So as I said, you can't intellectualize this thing. God says, I'll take the foolish things to confound the wise. Because I've often wondered, God, why tongues? It's like the tithe. Why tithe? But God takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And here's another thing that you need to know because I know that somebody's going to go home tonight and you're going to pray and God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. The Spirit gives the utterance, but you make the sound. Well, Pastor, when, you know, it don't sound like nothing to me. It just sounds like a bunch of gibberish. Have you ever seen a baby when they're learning to talk? When a baby first starts to talk, what does it sound like? A gibberish. But then the more they are around you and other people who use the English language, what happens? It begins to develop, and all of a sudden that child, that baby, instead of just saying baba, they say bottle. Instead of saying mama, they say mama or mother. But it starts off as gibberish. And it's the same thing with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When I got baptized with the Holy Ghost in my living room at home, when my girlfriend laid her hands on me, all I remember is just, I, 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 it didn't sound like nothing to me. But then the next day and the next day, as I begin to pray, pretty soon I begin to hear 